Hi, this video is about a super important topic in academia. It's about delegating. Delegating is actually an art. I still work on it all the time. I've definitely, this is maybe something I struggled with about the most in running a lab. This is also a never ending process. You always discover things about you and about who you trust with what and whatever. So, but I think without the ability to delegate properly, you cannot run a successful team. You know, you'll drive yourself nuts if you have to have control over everything. And so, yeah, you will not be successful. And it's also a certain route towards burnout. So thinking very, very clearly about delegating is super important for success. Now, this video is more about from the perspective of a PI, but I think this delegating will come into play at various different career stages, including also when you're a PhD student, maybe you have a little team of undergraduate students or whatever. And so I think thinking about this, not just letting it happen, but actively planning it is gonna be very important. This video is about that. What you have to realize why delegating is so difficult for many people, including myself, is that it's about giving up control, huh? because you're giving control of a certain task or something to somebody else. And giving up control entails trust. So you need to be able to trust people with a certain task that they will do it well and because you don't have control over this task anymore. So actually, <laughs> success in delegating starts already with hiring. So it's, um, as many things, it goes back to the hiring process. I think it's a very important that you hire people that you can trust and that you have a network of trust also among your collaborators. That's the basis of all of that, because if you can trust people, you can't delegate. Now, some things about delegating. So first of all, when you start <laughs> entrusting somebody with a task, it will appear to you, of course, as a time sink, because you need to train somebody, bring somebody up to speed on whatever the task is or the project, whatever it needs. Tell them about the experimental design, about the details, the methods, whatever the case may be, whatever your field of research is. And so, of course, as in most mentoring processes, this is a, initially a time sink. And so that may also, well, detract you from the necessity of delegating because you are already busy and now you also have to explain all the stuff to somebody else. And that is, of course, initially a time drain. But this is the wrong way to look at it, of course. The way to look at it is... This is your paying in. <laughs> Basically, you're paying into a bank and you get the dividends later, right? Of course, you need to bring people up to speed and of course, you need to train them in a certain task or research process, whatever it is. But in the end, of course, once you have handed over control of this thing to somebody else, then you gain the benefits because you get more stuff done. So really think of this initial training as an investment and you cannot compare it to, well, if I did it now myself, I would be much faster with it, which is true. <laughs> of course, you're going to be much faster doing it yourself if um, you compare that time to the time that you needed to train somebody. But this is, of course, the wrong way to look at it. Look at it in terms of an investment that will pay back later. Now, one thing about delegating is that also you empower people, you know, by giving them your trust and by giving up control, you give them responsibility. And that can be a very positive effect for the person that you have so empowered. So let, let's say, for example, you're working on a complex uh, grant proposal and you need some help from people because simply you cannot do it all by yourself. You will do most of it because maybe, let's say, this is your responsibility, right? But uh, maybe you can't make every graph yourself. Maybe you can do a little bit of research in the literature by yourself. Or you cannot work out all the statistics and the, the lab methods by yourself. Whatever the case may be in your field, there's going to be some things that you need help from others. So you delegate that task to somebody else to deliver to you. And so then you empower these people. And actually, the way to pay back is also to say thank you so and to give some other rewards. There's many ways, basically, to very subtly reward people. But um, one, one important thing is to never forget to say thank you when you have uh, received that work from somebody else that you have delegated this to. So, of course, you trust somebody with something, they deliver work to you, you need to reward them. You need to say thank you at the very least. 
One of the biggest hurdles to delegating is, is of course, if you're a perfectionist. If you're a perfectionist, you have all kinds of problems anyway. There will be maybe a separate video about that. But uh, of course, you will then find it very difficult to give up control over every aspect of your project because you need to, it needs to be done perfectly and nobody does it as good as, as you, let's say. This will be an obstacle and you need to overcome that. There's no way around it. Simply because if you have to do everything by yourself, you just cannot get enough done. You'll be stuck. You will be not as productive as other people that have the ability to delegate. So you need to work on that if that's your issue. Of course, as I said in the beginning, this is also an art. You need to know what you can delegate and what you really need to do yourself. So um, deciding that is difficult and I can't really give you any um, any hard and fast rules on that you need to you need to figure this out over time but let's give you let's give you some examples for example example one you're a PhD student you have to do uh, some measurements on an experiment it's a key experiment for your PhD and there's one measurement is, is a key response variable for your experiment let's say biomass or whatever it is or percent root colonization and so now you of course maybe you work with a team of undergraduate students that will that you mentor and that help you and other people with your stuff but if there is a response variable, something that you need to measure that's key for the success of your thesis chapter, let's say, do not <laughs> delegate that to somebody else. Because if it goes wrong, right, then you are the one who has the problem and this should be on you. So this is not something that you should delegate. So think carefully about, is this going to be a key response variable for me that my PhD depends on? You do it yourself. If this is an ancillary variable, that would be nice to have and that will lead to a more well-rounded data set, fine. <laughs> you can delegate it to somebody else. But this is an important judgment for you to make, also for your advisor to help you with this judgment, but do not delegate key tasks that are important for the success of your PhD, if you're a PhD student. Example two, maybe you as a PI have to write a press release on a paper. Do you have to write it yourself? It's up to you. I generally write them myself, but maybe it would also be better to ask um, a postdoc that was involved or a graduate student that was involved, do you want to write it? And for uh, her or him, this might actually be a great experience and they may feel empowered and uh, valued and at the same time they may do a better job than you, right? So this is something that is maybe not a key task, this is not writing a key section of a research proposal that really is your responsibility as a PI, this is a press release, somebody else can do it, this is maybe something you can decide to delegate to somebody else. And so in your head you can go through an endless number of these examples and you have to decide for yourself is this super important for my PhD project, my thesis chapter, for my career, for whatever? And then you need to make that call. Do I have to do it by myself or can I get help or can I really delegate the entire task to somebody? This is something difficult to figure out. This is not easy. You know, you need to work on that. I continuously work on that and I'm not having an easy time with that either. But I think without that ability to um, relinquish some of that control, you will not be successful. You have to realize that if you're overwhelmed with tasks, if you're unable to delegate properly and effectively, this is the recipe for burnout because you will be overwhelmed constantly. You cannot get stuff done. So to distribute tasks in an effective and fair manner on uh, multiple shoulders will be key to success. So think about this for the tasks that you do, for the tasks that are ahead of you, um, maybe write it down so like I can farm this out to some degree to somebody because it's maybe not as essential these things I really need to do myself this is where I can get help and this needs work but I think you will thank yourself later for having gone through this process and for at least having really thought this through because getting help is never wrong uh, you cannot do everything by yourself otherwise you you will not be as successful as you could be and you'll not be as productive. So I think take this video maybe as an opportunity to evaluate what you're doing and to what extent you can work with others, think about how you can done it, how you can get it done fairly and effectively and with rewards for the people that are involved in that delegating. With that, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll See you in the next video.
Bye.